Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Two Dumbbells and a Microphone. I'm DJ Moore. And I'm Joey Dussel. And today, our topic, working out for life, or working out for life, or working out for life. Nice. I, I guess we can say it a few ways, and I think that's the way I want it to be uh, come across, is that uh, you're not really sure how I'm putting the emphasis on the word life. Mm -hmm. working out so, i like that yeah that's on purpose it is on purpose so working out for life let's start yeah here we are episode 11 we're back in dj's kitchen so we've kind of <laughs> done another set switch well, for everybody that's following along dining, <laughs> dining room dining room yeah dining room. sorry not kitchen uh, but we're here today to talk about this idea of working out for life and as you hinted at dj it kind of has a little bit of a a play on words, maybe a semantics ar uh, argument on working out for the duration of your life or working out to save your life or maybe working out to, to keep your life safe. And there's a little bit of uh, you know extra stuff we can explore today, but I think it's an interesting topic because it, it lets us really get into why we're going through the effort of workouts, nutrition, laundry, preparation, all the stuff that it takes to be healthy. Like, what is it all for? And be reminded, I uh, will remind you again, we are not talking about weight loss, fat loss, muscle strength, or gaining, you know, putting more plates on your bar. We are talking about what is really important to us about health mm -hmm. and fitness. Yeah, that's so right? key. I, I think this is what is going to separate us from most others is that we haven't really discussed those three kind of main topics, you know, the fat yeah. loss, the weight loss, and the strength and muscle gain. And stuff That's like what that. you hear about most of the time. That's 99% of what everybody's focused in on. And we really want to bring something different to the table and tell you what the purpose is for. Mm -hmm. Why do we do this for life or our life or somebody else's life? Mm -hmm. Right? So I'll explain mine. I got a couple stories. How do you want to lead this off? You want to I say lay into it. You know, I'm thinking about this uh, for the audience's perspective, you know, just to kind of catch them up. DJ and I planned out the podcast and we thought about the topics that we wanted to cover and kind of the way that we wanted to cover those items. And this was on the list pretty early on because, you know, DJ and I have both identified that we are much more interested in working out with quote unquote regular people rather right. than these spectacular athletes. And that's not a knock on the athlete. I love the hard work and dedication. But as we've said before, losing the second chin is always more rewarding than helping an athlete gain a second championship trophy. So if we're looking at this from a health and wellness standpoint and looking at those regular people, then we really do want to have fitness that works for their entire life. And right. that's the duration, but it's also the kind of the medical life-saving nature of fitness where we've had clients who are going through this kind of a turnaround in their life where they're, they're really faced with a hard moment, usually from their doctor that stimulates them to make a change. And that's where we wanted to really lay into this idea of working out for your life. Right. Uh, so I got a couple of stories that maybe make this relatable on, on one way of how we set it, like for your life, how to yeah. save your own life. And I think this is really relevant because I'll pick a, a hot topic, which is diabetes. Okay, go for it. Diabetes is, for most people, scary when they hear it, if, if they hear it for themselves, like they're, they have it, mm -hmm. type one or type two. Mm -hmm. And there's a person I know who has uh, come up with diabetes, okay, I'll just say it like that. Mm -hmm. Now he has diabetes. Okay. And because of that, he's had to alter the way he eats and works out and, and everything mm -hmm. is now wrapped around this idea that he has to change all his eating habits. Mm -hmm. Because if he doesn't, the type two turns into type one and things get worse from there, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to go into all the details of diabetes. I think we can look that up on our, on our own. Sure. But his life has to be saved by him changing this. Otherwise it's going to be shortened mm -hmm. and it's going to be a, a, a less quality of life. Mm -hmm. So working out for your life for this story is just that it, it's to save his own life. Right. And I think that's really important because I think there's a lot of people out there who actually have to. Right. And not in diabetes is just one thing. There's a, there's a hundred thousand other things that people are having to do change with their exercise habits, their nutritional habits to save their own life. Mm -hmm. 
And so if that's the case, yes, that's how we're relating this to normal people is like, you know what you're doing. You may not even like it, but if you don't do it, it shortens your life and makes it worse along the way. Yeah, that's a key distinction. Shorten and worse and along worse. the way. Yeah. And worse. And you know, the interesting thing while you share that story is, you know, your your client there was faced with a choice of changing or progressing down that path of disease. And again, not to call anybody out, but since he didn't change in those early moments, he then gets to a point in his life where he's still faced with a mandatory change. Otherwise, it's going to be an even worse outcome. So kind of by delaying his his response to those warning signs, he doesn't really avoid the ultimate change anyways. It's just at a, a higher stakes moment later on in life. And it's at a harder point in life, too. Yeah, a little more difficult later on. A lot on. more difficult yeah. for people when they're middle-aged. That's a, that's a really yeah. good point because it's always easier to do a smaller course correction, even if you're driving your car, right? A small adjustment on the steering wheel rather than waiting too late and then needing to do something that yeah. might be too much. And, and I come across this... I like how you said regular people, and that's not to cut, you know, to make it sound weird. It's just this is what we've grown up with. You and I, as trainers and coaches, we we've got to see all the just real regular people, which made us really yeah. aware of how we should be training and helping people. It was really this eye opener that people were coming to us for more reasons to just fat loss, muscle gain, strength, and all that. They were coming to us because they had other ailments and illnesses that were caused by you know their habits mm -hmm. and if they are not put in check well then i just like i said before the, it's worse right and so that's something that we have grown up with and that's why i wanted to bring it up is because it's really important to me that people understand that when i talk to you as a trainer or you talk to them as a trainer or a coach we're looking at it things through a different lens here sometimes mm -hmm. and it's like well we'd rather help you uh, get, help you reduce your 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 diabetes, mm -hmm. right? Or this other illness. We mm -hmm. I, that's what I'd rather get into with you rather than just your fat loss. Yeah. So I think that says a lot about how we've grown up. So that's an important distinction. Yeah, because the fat loss should be, and this is my opinion, should be a measurement of whether you're headed in the right direction. Yeah. Towards that goal of staving off diabetes. Yeah. Right. Or any other uh, other chronic ailment. And that is a way to think about it. You know, like if you're a young person who is able to start making these changes sooner, they're going to be easier for you and you're going to be able to derive that enjoyment along the way, right? Going through your 20s or your 30s or your 40s at a little higher level of health makes that decade more enjoyable. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I really encourage people always to begin with this as soon as possible. And while you might look at your, your stomach, your waistline or your scale as kind of the thing that's at the top of your mind, it should be only to see if you're headed in the right direction for those longer term kind of higher stakes consequences. Right. I agree. Yeah. Second story. Go ahead. Just bust it out. Yeah. This is, this, this is the thing we talked about earlier. So the person that I know has uh, arthritis, rheumatoid mm -hmm. arthritis. Mm -hmm. And I, I've, I've had my uh, training, you know, through the years I've ran into this before with people. And so I become oh, really... So this is pretty common, but for those that oh, don't know, yeah, tell, tell the audience. Yeah, rheumatoid arthritis is really common, actually. And we find it a lot. And as trainers, it, we've come across it more often than not. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be a deciding factor whether or not the person will work out or eat nutritionally better is to help that condition. Mm -hmm. So over the years, I've become quite fluent in how to deal with this. Okay. And, and it's not a mystery how. It's, it's, it's everywhere. It's, mm -hmm. you, know, you have to include more movement, proper nutritional intake stuff like that. But the person I know, and this is probably for a lot of people, they have all this information about how to help themselves to the nutrition and exercise, and they don't really execute it all the way through. Uh -huh. And it saddens me because this also is almost like doing nothing. Mm. You're, you're kind of fooling and tricking your own body that you're really doing something and you're not doing it. So yeah. there's just stages, I think, with people. There are those who have a condition and do nothing about it, mm -hmm. Right. And then there are those who have the same condition and do kind of some things about it, but not all the way. Mm -hmm. And then there's those who actually go all the way and do something about it and really help themselves out. Now, it may not get rid of the condition 100% because it doesn't heal all, but what it does do is it, it limits the uh, effect of whatever this illness is. The expression. That's right. right. And so with these categories, it's either do nothing, do something, or do all things. And so I think that that category where they don't, they only do some things, I think that's even worse. Mm. 
It's just fooling them. Like, uh, like oh, I'm being partially good. Okay. And they have their reasons, right? This person has their reasons for why they're doing it, but they're just not founded in really facts. Mm. They're founded in how they feel. Mm. And they know that they hurt, which I can totally understand and empathize with because I get it myself. Pain is a big But deal. if I, if, yeah. if I told you this, if I said, hey, if you could reduce the pain by 40%, would you? And they always say yes to me. And I said, well, you're going to have to do this, this, and this. And they're like, oh, well. <laughs> and then you're like, well, then you must not want it bad enough. And I, yeah. I don't want to offend anybody, which it's easy to do nowadays. But it, it's either do it or don't do it. Mm -hmm. There is no in-between because the in-between is not really helping either. And you're just kind of wasting your money and time. Mm. I'd rather you just do nothing. Don't waste your time and money then. Mm. Or do all things. Interesting. So if we have kind of this three, this three categories, the first group is this head in the sand. They kind of ignore it. They don't do anything to manage or even to mitigate their conditions. And of course they, they suffer the consequences For sure. a little bit more rapidly, right? I'm thinking back to a, a, one of my friends from high school, diabetic, he would still enjoy a lot of donuts and then just inject more insulin to make up for it which is absolutely not in the spirit of managing your health, right? right. The better option would be no donuts and, and be able to have less, in, to need less insulin injected. So in that first category, I hear what you're saying there. And then the other side of it, I think people know as well, which is that, that story of, you know, I was diagnosed with X, Y, or Z, mm -hmm. and I changed sort of like a movie. I changed my whole life. We've right. heard those kind of, yeah. you know, through and through success stories that are triggered by what could be a catastrophic diagnosis. Uh, and so there's, there is definitely those two sides of it. And then this middle group, I think is probably the largest population, yes. right? Cause it it's is huge. That where we've bought the supplement, but we don't take it every day. Or we have the yeah. tool, but we don't use it, you know, and every day. Yeah. And so I can totally identify with those. And I wonder what it is that kind of just makes someone fit into one of those three, or if there's a way for them to shift probably throughout the course of a person's life, they kind of are in each of the camps for certain there durations. Is. I've said it once and I'll say it again. It really starts within your own mind, Joey. Mm. This is the process of where all your actions come from is upstairs. Yeah, it makes sense. And I, I can completely empathize and understand from people's standpoint, sometimes the mind is weak and doesn't want to do these things that will help it. Mm. I understand that from my own personal life. I've been through things that are very similar to this. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, I can't really explain it from a therapist's point of view, but I know where it starts. Mm. And I know how you can fix it but it's just going to take that what I've used before in my pillars, which is the will. Right. And is that purpose big enough to do it? Is your condition grand enough for you to have a real purpose to fix that? And if you listen to that podcast where yeah. I talk about your real purpose, not your goal, maybe this will drive that point home. Mm -hmm. It's that you really have to have the will, the purpose, and the sustainable ability to do this thing. For it to actually change, and, I love it and change yeah. that illness. And I'm just going to refer back to my yeah. other podcast, that's which five, because it five uh, B, it, it stands up the same way yeah. all the time. You know, that's a really important call out, and it, it makes me think of something which I hear fairly regularly from clients who are parents, and it's usually the, something along the lines of, "I would do anything for my kids, Mama Bear, Papa Bear, protect them, defend them, take care of them." And I kind of want to give a little bit of a pushback to them and say, well, anything really? Because there's some things you're not doing, which is to take care of your own self, right? And to be able to protect your health and wellness, to continue your role as a parent, right? Doing parenting activities, and then also be there in case of emergency and for the duration of, or as much of the duration of that child's life as you can. And so I really encourage, if you can think about what, what DJ just said and like, What's your reason? What's your, what's your what's grand your purpose? purpose? Yeah. Like if you really have a will and I'm sure there's some listeners who are hearing me and, and saying like, dude, that's it. Exactly. I had this come to Jesus moment on the scale at my doctor's office and I walked in and the next thing I heard was that I wasn't going to make it to my youngest child's graduation. Like that's real and that's scary. And I don't wish that moment on anybody, but if that's what it takes for, let's just say Ed, to make a huge change in his life, I'm going to applaud that change. And I would hope that anybody who's listening can harness that energy, hear that story and start to apply it to yourself right now. It's scary, but you really have to think about like, dude, if I, if I keep skipping workouts and not eating healthy and blah, 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 there's going to be a moment. Maybe it's in your fifth decade of life where you get out of breath 
going up the stairs to the wherever, you know, a couple of flights of stairs and you end up needing to take a break and stand by the side. And like, I don't know if you feel embarrassed or scared or whatever, whatever it takes for you to then say, wow, that is absolutely not what I want. I will take the discomfort of the gym rather than the discomfort of a life in that manner. And I know that's kind of a, a long sentence, right? We're kind of running along on our topics, but if you're following with me here, I want you to understand that if we're thinking about our topic of working out for your life, we're, we're thinking about the duration of your life, the way you live your life, and then also, you know, being able to, to be here for everything you want to do and everybody that you care about. You know, yeah, I agree with you. And uh, you bring up something and, and it sparked a memory of mine and I want to share it because this is the, cool. how I like our podcast to go. It sparked yeah. something and I called it mama bear. Mm. There was a lady who came to me and this was when I very first started, uh, not really sorry, not, not very first started, but really started at the, uh, that other gym with you. Okay. And, uh, she came in because she wanted to have training for her son. And I think it was like 10 or so. And I think it was that for sports or for basketball and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I noticed right away that she was a larger woman and she needed to probably lose quite a bit of weight. And mm-hmm. I've seen her before working out and stuff like that. I knew who she kind of was and we had talked previously. So it wasn't like a, a complete stranger. So she's there for training she's for her son. For her son. Okay, yeah. Gotcha. Because she recognized I had, I had helped some other kids and stuff like that. And we had talked and, and stuff like that. So, but as we're sitting there in the session, you know, not the session, but the, um, oh man, what were they called? Fit the, plans. Those client the, the, interviews. The, 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 the yeah. client interview. When we were sitting there and I, I got this idea, it's like, you know, what happens to Mama Bear when Mama Bear gets sick? Because Mama Bear is in control of all the kids, their meals, the getting them to school, waking them up, the laundry, the dishes. Mama Bear, right? right? At this sure. idea. Because that's, that's really kind of a her... center of hub yeah, of the life yeah, of exactly. a family for a lot. Right? Yeah. And, and I was just sensing that like she needed my help more than her son mm. because to save her, her life, I, I started talking to her about what she was going to do and how important she was, the healthier yeah. she was, yeah. the more she could take care of the family and better off too. Mm. So what happens to mama bear was like, what happens when she gets sick yeah. or goes down or gets injured or anything like that? Well, who takes care of the kids? Who's got to step up? Well, you know, Papa bear, or some of the kids and whatever, but right. that really hit home, man. It was like, yeah, yeah for the better life of your children, mm-hmm. have a better, healthier life for yourself. Right. And that's what triggered it. Yeah. And I remember her and I, and I did use the words mama bear. Cool. Because it was like, man, that's classic uh, oxygen mask, right? With the, if the oxygen mask deploy when you're in the airplane in an emergency situation, we've all heard this before, put your own mask on before helping others. And I love that what you're saying there is like for her to be her utmost parent, the, the, the mama bear, she has to be able to take care of her own wellness yeah, to and she needs the time and support to be able to do that. Yeah. And that was very important. And I wanted to be that coach for her. Cool. I wanted to help show her it was possible. So, you know, I guess that's another long story. But I like it. It's like working out for your life for someone else's life. For someone life. else's yeah. life. This is this is why parent, I love the topic. Working yeah. out for life is a very can be just flipped around. Yeah. And when then maybe this last story here. Mm. Because I have senior clients. Okay for their life mm. because they walk downstairs. So this is like lifestyle, the yeah. way they want to live, the activities right. they want to be able to the engage things in. that they're engaging in. Even the independence of being of in their own home. By themselves. Yeah. Yes. We might be one day working out for our life just to have right. the life we want to live. That's right. That's huge. Because my client refuses to move to a place that's completely with no stairs. Mm. Well, that's really, on, uh, honestly, like she can't afford to just, buy a new house with no stairs of course not she's been here for a while and this is her home Mm -hmm. right so we have to train and work out for her to handle that many flights of stairs to maintain her ability to climb the time right current home and we train for when she if she were to ever fall down Mm. what does she need to do to get up to to pull herself to maneuver her body whatever may be and so i train her and a couple others this similar pattern is this well be fair. I train everybody this way, Mm -hmm. but for them specifically, the intention is if something should happen to them, 
they can save their own life by crawling or maneuvering to the phone or getting up or whatever may yeah. be the case. Highly so, applicable. Right. right. I, I train everybody this way, but for them, I explain it this way. Mm -hmm. Why are we doing this kettlebell this way? Because this is going to represent this in your home. Mm -hmm. Or this push is for this when you do this. Mm -hmm. And this is for to save their life. Because what happens after a certain age, there's this weird statistic or a st statistic out there. After the age of 70, your chances of falling down and breaking your hip and then uh, your life expectancy right. declines rapidly yeah. after you break your, your hip. Your risk of fall increases and yeah. the effects of a fall are more detrimental. Right. Right. And so to, to the point of death. Of death. I mean, this is how right. my grandma passed away. Oh, see? A fall in her own home. And even though we were over all the time, you know, very loving grandchildren, we're seeing her all the time. We, it was too long in between our visits and she ended up in the home and never back at her own place uh, before she died. And so this is a really big deal. Then and for you to have your clients that are able to continue living in their own home with stairs and also to train for mitigating and reducing the harm of those disaster moments. That's that's a yep. fantastic way to really make it apply to their everyday life. And she likes the golf still. Yeah. So I'm like. Well, hell yeah, let's See, go. See, that's great. It's not yeah. just doom and gloom of yeah. capping your downside and making a fall less likely or making a fall less harmful. It's also your access to the activities you enjoy yeah. doing. Yeah. She goes, she went to uh, she went to Ireland not too long ago. And like, cool. and I know if anything about being in a foreign place, mm -hmm. um, especially those older places, mm -hmm. uh, the stairs aren't uniform. The accessibility in the, the castle. The, the, the <laughs> streets are different. The yeah. sidewalks are different. The, everything is, yeah. is yeah, a yeah, tripping a hazard for, uh, for an aged person or anybody, to be honest. Right. So you actually have to be able to have a, a good, you know, healthy body to even go on some types of vacations. Yeah. And if she, yeah. she's just not the one that sits by the pool. So. Boy, the number of people who are just, you know, sort of working their heart out, uh, living towards that retirement, but are then going to end up in a retirement body, which doesn't carry them through the journeys they want to do. That's kind of heartbreaking for me because I certainly want, wouldn't want to go through that experience myself. So I'm really encouraged to hear about her. And, you know, I love that story of working out in there to get international travel to feel safe when, you know, to feel comfortable in your they, own home. Yeah, they gotta, they gotta pick up those bags, man. Yeah. The, 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 you know, there is yeah. a weight limit to those, uh, those bags. And when, uh -huh. if you're going to go for a couple of weeks, it's closer to 50 pounds on those bags. Yeah. You well, know? in the moment Suitcases. in an airplane, when the people are trying to put their carry on luggage in the top shelf, and I don't want to be throwing shade on anybody, but cause I know we all have our own tr troubles and struggles, but it's like, um, a really clear example of how detrimental it can be when you lose your upper body strength. You can't even pick up your own suitcase to put it on the top shelf. And I know some people will say like, hey, we have our injuries. And again, I'm not trying to make fun of anyone, but I personally would feel embarrassed if I was holding up the entire line and I was almost dropping my suitcase on my own face, right? And, and that's just in a moment of normal situation. What if we're in an emergency and we're all trying to leave in a hurry? And, and you are not capable of doing it. Well, it's your own self that's at risk, but also you're having this influence and this effect on other people. And so I think that for all of us, we should be really trying to emphasize, yeah, you know, it's, it's good to be healthy so that you can avoid trouble and struggles and, and the problems that come with poor health. But we also want to be healthy so we can be robust and safe and have fun with the activities that we choose to do. And I think that those things are not Instagrammable, they're nope. definitely non-scale victories. There's nope. no way to measure, nope. you know, but we've kind of lost that in our, in our health and fitness culture because there's no way to put the, the, you know, two minutes of speaking that I just did. You can't put that on a single sentence on the cover of a health and fitness magazine, you know, no, they like put eight the, weeks to 18 inch arms. Well, that's <laughs> why it's called, so uh, there's no buzzword for it. That's why it's not called, it's not health and fitness anymore. It's fitness. Right. And then. Dude, some of the magazines Those are magazines. just called muscle. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, at least they're mask off in that well, moment. But. Well, there's men's fitness, women's fitness. They just cut out the health part. They just yeah. put fitness. Sure. And it's not really, you, fitness is not quantifiable. I'm sorry. Dude, and even in the magazines, it's not, it's not complete fitness. It's just muscle size, waist size. You know, I've never read an article ads, talking about this ads. stuff. Ads and then ads. ads yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, sorry. Different topic. Let's keep. <laughs> we sorry. can go on that for yeah. a long time, but we've chose Ooh. to make the podcast uh, uh, ad free for the very reason of just keeping it in that conversational, you know, vibe. And I, I really hope that if somebody's listening to the, this for the first time, if this is the first episode they've ever heard, 
They're going 25 minutes in with us. You know, as we're doing these podcasts, I hope that they know the advice that we're sharing is with that wholehearted, good natured spirit for their best interest. So if I say something and you feel a little tingling, you know, pring, uh, <laughs> prick of, of Ooh. upset at me, you know, like don't take it personally. I'm not trying to go after you, but maybe there's a little reason why you're feeling that way. And if yeah. it's, if it's that I can get a little bit of a target on you, maybe that's something that, that you can use as a reason to <laughs> make you, a change. Have you ever been stung like that before? Yeah. yeah see, I know you? how it feels. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Been it's called. not a good feeling, but well, if it ends you up in a better place then maybe it is for the best. Well, they do say this, if the shoe fits. Yeah. Right? And my, and my my idea here is not to target people. Mm-hmm. I'm, I've always said this. I'm here to help. Mm-hmm. I know that I may come across a certain way, but hey, <laughs> I'm not going to go on this whole show and not probably offend somebody. Yeah, some and point. I'm glad you bring that up because we've seen now like the other side of this, which is that we've almost become too accepting of, of you know, kind of this culture of not taking care of ourselves. I mean, let's think about it by the numbers. Modern medicine in America right now, you have access to the best stuff. How many people do you know that don't go through their full course of PT after they've received this fantastic knee surgery? Uh, Too many. You want me to put it up? I can't. It's It's too high, right? It's too high. Meanwhile, in other countries in the world, they don't even have access to a surgery of that quality in that level of cleanliness with that level of rehab, and they're darn sure not going to turn their nose up at the movements that are going to restore their normal functions for the rest of their life right right. and so we have this really weird sort of thing going on where it's like oh yeah okay you missed your appointments i kind of want to say why why did you miss your important that was the most important thing for you to do post knee surgery you have got to be doing that to take care of yourself and it's a little bit distasteful to be skipping out on that that opportunity to take care of your your best self and so if you're listening and you hear this maybe it's a little bit offensive to you you get it like dj said you feel that sting but i want you to because i want you to go to your pt i want you to what do coaches do joey yeah what do coaches do do you think that you're going to tell me that some of these the 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 best coaches in the world aren't up in their players business that's a good point yeah these multi-million dollar players are getting talked to like adults Mm -hmm. from their coach why because coaches know best i'm not here to offend you i'm here to set you straight right if you don't like it yeah. You can turn me off. There you go. You can walk away and you can go back to doing whatever you were freaking doing. I didn't use an F bomb there. <laughs> I'm working on this. I want to, everybody. Yeah, yeah. I want Ooh. to use curse words. Cause I get super animated. We'll save them. I, I I will always say this. <laughs> yeah. As much information as I can dish out to you on a regular basis, I know that you're not gonna listen to me all the time. Mm-hmm. that's okay. Sure. I expect that as a coach. Yeah. But if you want the real results and you want to get this stuff done, then freaking listen. Yeah. I didn't do this for this many years to not be heard by somebody and say, ah, oh, it's garbage. Mm-hmm. No way. Yeah. I know what I'm here for. And I know my own purpose in this business that I'm doing is to help people. Right. If you don't like the way I call you out, you know what you can do. I think that's a good point, you know, because people might not be, totally on board with your message. They might say, Hey, I do want to turn this guy off, but when they are ready to listen to you, you'll say the same thing that you're saying. now. Same thing. And exactly in the same way. There you go. Because I'm this animated. Yeah. You should see me in person. (laughs) I I, I can get, my hands will go more. We've reduced you down to just the audio. (laughs) Just keep me like in a frame. (laughs) Got you from uh, moving around. That's funny. (laughs) Let's get right back on topic. Yeah. Stick with it. Because you said, uh, you said something really important too with uh, policemen and firemen and people mm. who are their lives depend on their health, right? Too, mm-hmm. right? How how fit, how healthy should our first responders be? Right. You know, would it help them to yeah. be healthy and in good shape? Yeah, absolutely. So if or we're thinking, life. if we're thinking about this one. You know, if they're looking at the podcast and they're hearing this episode, they might be screaming at us to say, work it out for your life. There might be a moment where you're, as a police officer, in a fight for your life. Save your own life. Or you're a a, a military guy and you need to be able to move yourself or move a buddy. Or if you're going through, you know, as a firefighter, you need to have this utmost strength, highest cardiovascular capacity. I mean, right. I don't have to explain it to you. if People understand. We know this. We want our lifesavers to be in their peak condition so that we can benefit when they save our lives, but we also want them to be in their peak condition so that they can make it through their career. 
injury free and hopefully as healthy as possible. Well, if I need them for yeah. some, I right. want them. Yeah. I want the strongest, most cardiovascularly trained, healthiest yeah. people Keep going. coming to get at, get me. I think that would be great when I find out that the, that the person who saved my life or my loved one's life is taking care of themselves so that they can help me out. I think that's highly important. I would love for all our policemen, our firemen, our, our military to all be about health. Of course I would. I right. want the, I'd love the When you're on the world. receiving end of their services, yeah, I want them tipped off. Especially yeah. then. Yeah. Especially then. Yep. And of but course. as well for them during those moments because we know – the life of a police officer is stressful. The schedule 100. of a firefighter is hard on your 100. everything, your heart, your mind, your family. And so I think that if we're thinking about working out for your life, we have to also include this category of, of actual life saving. So, yeah. You know, and of course it's clear for the, the police and the firefighters and the military, but you know, it's a, it's a scary world out there. And there might be moments where you either need to be able to flee, run, you know, move your own body as fast as you can to get out of danger or maybe fight where you're fighting someone off or you're protecting yourself or someone else. And I don't mean to be all doom and gloom and scary, but I know that you can feel a lot more comfortable, a lot less anxious in your everyday life when you have that underlying sensation and awareness that you could scoop up one of your toddlers under each arm and just get out of there if you needed to. And I know there's right. a, a population in America that couldn't do that. There, it would be hard for them to run their own bodies, let alone carry objects at the same time. Yeah. And if they bumped into someone, they might fall down. And then they fall down, it's like a whole operation to get back up. You know, and just in the other day, I watched a video of a woman whose baby stroller was blown away by the strong wind while she was getting, getting her kid in and out of the car. And she started chasing after it, fell down, couldn't get up, fell down again, just trying to get up. Her car, her baby stroller rolls into traffic and a bystander is able to catch it and, and save the day. Yeah. But it was like, boy, oh, I feel like if I was, you know, challenged by the, the discomfort of engaging in workouts, I would feel much more uncomfortable with not being able to, to save my own child's life in the stroller. You know, like I, that must feel bad as a, as a parent, as a caregiver. And so I would say, kind of like DJ mentioned earlier, there's some equations that are easy to calculate. Like, hey, my life might be at risk as a fight, you know, in a, a military situation, I'm going to work out. Well, we also have to include that it might be someone else's life that you're taking care of and that you should bring that same energy into your workouts where it's just clear that you're going to keep pushing and keep working because what's at stake is absolutely worth it. Boy, man, you just made you spark another memory. Oh, cool. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, thanks for listening. Be that, was a, that was a long one. No, that's <laughs> great because, uh, look, I'm not apologizing anytime anymore for the length that we go because I think every story here is powerful for somebody. True. Because it sets up another real-life situation. It's a good reminder. Hundreds of thousands of people do this. Yeah. So I've worked with, with uh, caregivers, mm. nurses, mm -hmm. right? And it, what's funny is I had a, a client goes home to home to home to home to home. Okay. And Ryan has to, you know, pick up and maneuver uh, mm. patients. Oh boy. Right. Patient and, lift. Right. And she's got a bad hip that she just had surgery on. And so she, it's just repaired and working through it, getting it stronger, blah, blah, blah. You know, all the rehab PT, I'm doing a lot of the work that her own physical therapist is, isn't doing, mm. which it's not uncommon. Yeah. Sorry. I'm not going to go there, but that's part of the story anyway. But it, it just, it occurs to me. Right, there's a lot of medical staff, mm. right, that are in charge and need to have a certain strength and ability to mm -hmm. move patients safely for their sake and their own sake. For the patient's safety, yeah, for the for the caregiver's it's safety. Right. Yeah. And well, if you've ever worked in a hospital, and I have, when you move like a limp body or mm -hmm. a, a patient, well, I don't want to say this because dead weight. Right. Not that they're not dead. I'm right. just saying it's it, non-contributing. There you go. Yeah. Um, it's it's much harder to move a human being. Mm -hmm. And so they do have special techniques that they use to roll people over, maneuver them with sheets to make it easier. But I'll tell you, a lot of those people in the medical staff are not healthy. Mm. That's and interesting. It, and it's not and not and it's not even surprising. I mean, once you work in that field, you realize that some people still smoke cigarettes. Yeah. And you're like, Well, you work in the medical field, well, right? Aren't but, there vending machines with candy? Oh, in the, the hospitals. Yeah, there's, yeah, <laughs> of know? course so there are. There's always the. We're not the throwing food. shade on anybody because no. the whole system is broken. Right, right. Even the people that are on the front lines and they're seeing 
basically the future, right? If you continue to get overweight and you continue to not care for your heart, you will end up in the hospital bed like that and it'll be other people lifting you. Um, But even those nurses are not fully participating in their own health and wellness when they know what it could, what it could mean. Right there. So they're in charge of, you know, working out for again, your life and my life. Yeah. What if I'm in the hospital and these people drop me Mm -hmm. and it leads to something worse because they weren't physically capable. Not that this would happen. I'm just, these scenarios are real. I've right. worked with medical They're staff. Plausible, and yeah. what's really problematic with her, the, the specific client, was that she was running into situations where taking care of the patient was way too cumbersome for her mm. own physical conditions, which oh, wasn't see. 100% herself. I see. She was in need of help, too, mm. in order to help others. Yeah. And so she needed to remain training. Mm. Constant diligence would have helped make her life and the patient's life a lot easier and yeah. safer. Yeah. So you, you start another, st- you, you stoked up another story, and it's relatable. It's a good example. Yeah. It's real. Yeah. This is the kind of people you and I have worked with as yeah. our entire lives. Yeah. It's never been those people who want straight up six packs and bulging muscles. Right. We've worked out with real people. I've worked with doctors, lawyers, professional, amateurs, you name it, mm-hmm. just real people. Right. No one's come up to me and just been like, yeah, man, I need to be shredded. I've never had a movie star nope. or, a, or anyone with a chauffeur. And even my clients who have said, like, I want to get a six pack. When I ask why, we can kind of go down this rabbit hole. And then almost invariably, it ends up being so I feel better about myself. True. So my spouse will be attracted to me okay. and I feel good about that. Totally relatable, totally accessible. And, you know, eventually it comes back to this idea of like, they just want to feel like they have that control of what they look like and how they can move, and how they feel. Yeah. And I totally connect with that, because it's the same sensation I, I want. I get it. Yeah. We talked about this yeah. on your podcast. My, yep. Well, it was what, uh, the origins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? Yeah. I mean, that body type, yeah. because that's what you see. Yeah. And they made men look so good. They're like, man, they're always buff, right? And yeah. they're like, no, mm-hmm. <laughs> they're not always buff. Right. And yeah, so like, especially like firemen, policemen, military guys, hey, they're not ripped, but they're some of the strongest people out there. I'm too. glad you put, po- yeah. Right? My firefighter and police officer friends, you guys have that strength. That's right. Crazy. Well, if they're training, yeah. they're not training to be ripped. Right. Okay. They're training to take care of their life mm-hmm. and somebody else's mm-hmm. life. And their bodies they carry reflect fists in one hand and yeah, yeah I their mean, body that's shape awesome. looks yeah. like that, which is that's true. a great example because you know, you could take a firefighter's um, you know, take his coveralls off and all his protective gear and there's calendars of that, I'm sure, you know, <laughs> they're looking sexy, but, but those guys don't look like Amber Crabbe and Fitch models, right? They, no. they have a different type of strength. And I love that we're talking about this today on this, this idea of working out for your life, because the way that the, the way that a body looks when it's extremely good at those activities, oh, here we go, is not the way that we have of the, these models. It's the most unhealthy. Mm-hmm. The the most like when you see guys posing on stage or right. super super lean. Yeah, those are actually some of the most unhealthy moments yeah. of their life. Yeah, because they're not getting enough water, enough nutrients, enough anything crazy to, diet for to the look, previous forty eight hours to, to look yeah. that shredded. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. They're at their most unhealthy point mm-hmm. right then. Mm-hmm. So and, don't and get, it's idolized in our yes, culture. Yes, everybody oh, wants the, it. Yeah, that's the brain. Everybody brain. wants it. Well, if you're listening to this, I hope you take away from this moment. If you got a, a firefighter's body and you're strong <laughs> as hell, you should feel hella good about you yourself. You should feel you hella know, you're good. You're working out for your life, and yeah. that's commendable. If you're and, and if you are that ass firefighter, ass. let me just put a bug on your shoulder to take care of your back and don't let yourself get hurt because nothing derails your career like a joint injury, particularly that, oh, yeah. that uh, very exposed spine. So take care of yourself, even with those weird positions that you have to be in. Cause they're doing patient lifts from, cl- you know, everything was falling next to they're the toilet aw- right? where they died. And I mean, it's really awkward. Everything lifts. is yeah. awkward when it comes one to this foot work. in a bathtub, one yeah. foot like with gear on and exactly gear on. Gear, yeah. yeah. T- what, how yeah, much yeah. that weighs? I'd yeah. love to know. Say if you're a fireman and Oof. you, and yeah, you get uh, us. <laughs> tell us how it. much that gear weighs as you carry it. Cause mm-hmm. I know for one, it's hot. Yeah. I know it's hot. Yeah. And so it's got to be hot and heavy and you can't see. So I'd love to know how much some of that stuff weighs. Yeah. So if you're listening to this and you're a fireman or a policeman who wears all those belts, yeah. and like that, how much is all that weigh? I'd love to know. Definitely. That's interesting to me. And I think it's a, it's a cool component of our topic today, right? We don't want to be too far astray, but remember what we're saying here. Working out for your life, it could be these emergency moments as police, law enforcement, military, firefighter. It could be 
an emergency moment for yourself or for someone else. That's right. It could be the quality of your life and it could be the yep. duration of your life. So working out for your life, like we hinted at the top of the episode, it's a little bit of a nebulous term. And I think it should be on purpose because it lets us collect all of these powerful reasons for what we're doing. Well, we just, we're just super creative joey <laughs> like we're so good yeah. at, we're professional amateurs yeah yeah no but in all seriousness you know we did talk about some stuff today that maybe people tuned out they they checked out they went to a different episode or a different show altogether but if you were here and you made it this far i hope that you're able to take a little bit of positive motivation away from these and if you're you know 10 15 20 pounds overweight i don't think that it's wrong for you to think ahead to 15 years from now, being 30, 40, 50 pounds overweight, explore what that's going to be like. And if you are not satisfied with it, start doing something about it now because it's only going to get more difficult as you get older yep. and, and, and become more challenging to make a recovery rather than a right. small adjustment to begin with. So if you're hearing this, don't, don't get down on yourself. Instead, maybe even reach out to us if you need help or we can you know direct you to a resource. But Use or, this as a springboard and think about the way to, you know, we talk about goal setting a lot. Mm -hmm. Let's flip that around. Mm -hmm. and let's, I'll do that. The, the, oppo the opposing side is to put all your fears on paper. And it can be the worst stuff. Like I, I am not able to stand up at my daughter's wedding because the diabetes has progressed and I had a wound on my foot and it didn't heal and I had it amputated. That's a real story that's happened to people. Yes. Yeah. And so it's not a, I'm not making it up, but if you write that down, and it terrifies you, and it makes you go to the gym more often or make better choices than my friend John in high school with his, with his extra insulin yeah, after his additional donut, yeah. you know, I would love to be able to, to know, like, I was able to help you make that little extra trigger. And if that's the case, yeah. you've heard it before, message, comment, whatever, let us know, because otherwise, it's just us hanging out and we enjoy that. But we got this podcast equipment to reach out to everybody else and to spread this message, and, and we get a kick out of the responses. So we've had some some messages and we've had some comments, but of course we want to have more of that. And yeah. it helps a lot if you share the show, even if it's just with one person. Think of somebody that you can give it to, send them one episode and let them know maybe a little bit about what we're doing and how we're trying to grow this. Let's give a shout out to Tommy. Yeah, Tommy. let's do it, man. This is our moment for yeah. some uh, appreciation. Sure. So I All have right. this... Yeah, uh, go for it. I have this, uh, my, my son's friend, Tommy... He's a good kid. They're all good kids, man, to me. I know they got their flaws, but uh, Tommy had a lot of weight to lose mm. um, back in the day. And I, I'm, I haven't seen Tommy in a long time. But Tommy's been listening to us. Mm -hmm. And so he threw back a comment. And it, I mean, it, it, it chokes me up because I really want to help people discover what it is and why we really do this for ourselves and others. Mm -hmm. And Tommy really nailed on it, man. He he took a step forward, and he helped a stranger. Would you read it? Can you oh, read it? Yeah, you hold on. Okay yeah, hold on. Let me go get that. Pull it up. Do you have it on your on your uh, computer? No, I, oh, I, I don't. It's on. Uh, it's on. Instagram. Okay, go grab it. Go for it. And I'll just fill in the blank here while DJ is gone. Um, I thought this was so cool. You know, I said, hey, when DJ shared this with me, I said we should take this moment, share it on the podcast. We'll make this part of a kind of community moment where we can actually get uh, a little bit of formal recognition for this fantastic effect, which is that as, as you'll hear DJ share, you know, Tommy's going out there, he's taking action that he wouldn't have before. And that is so cool uh, that I want to hear about every single time that this happens, whether it's big or small, don't hesitate to, to message us and tell us about it because this is so cool. Go All right. ahead. All right. So, Says, hey, DJ, I just wanted to say, man, I've been listening to you enjoy and it's been making me work out, man, back in the gym, doing weighted walks, runs, just everything back in shape for hunting season is the goal. And I was in the gym and saw a man probably in his 50s or 60s and he looked confused and he couldn't figure out the machines. And I was looking at this and he was getting discouraged. And I was like, no, man, this is what DJ and Joey are talking about. Like, even though he came and was just trying to figure out the machines, it's still progress. It's a start. I walked up, introduced myself, helped out, showed him some things. And before I, had, uh, before I had to leave for work, I told him, listen to the podcast, just give it a listen, and it will change the mindset you have. Dude. Come on. 
That's the best. And that, that applause is not for us no. and getting our podcast shouted out. It's for Tommy talking to somebody else and, and being an example of that ripple effect. That is so cool, you know, because I want to create that culture of it. approachability and having people be able to feel less intimidated in the gym. Yeah. And so if you're in there or if you're another listener and you can have a Tommy moment here, I say go for it. That's awesome. This is exactly what we do this for. Yeah. I, I, it just it just shook me a little bit, man, because sometimes we just talk and, and it's like you don't think anybody's actually listening. Mm-hmm. You're like, man. I got all this good information. For all we know, this moment for this older (laughs) gentleman, you know, that was helped out today, it's like, that might have been his last straw in the gym where he was like, I don't know. I'm about to be out of here. Yeah. Oh, this, yeah, you know, I was just about so tired of going. And then this nice young man talked to me and I got a new little spring in my step and a strategy for tomorrow. And I started listening to this cool podcast. And like, that is such a cool, powerful moment. I hope Tommy gives himself credit for that, that, that he's probably done for that gentleman. That's so cool. We don't know. And I talk about this with uh, with Nick. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, when I introduced, like, snowboarding to him for the first time, and then he became addicted. Mm. I mean, addicted. Okay. For real addicted. <laughs> Just like I did. Yeah. And I shared that passion with him. And I shared what I, what I went through, like, when I first stood on the mountain. It wasn't about tricks or anything like that. It was just being one with the with earth yeah. and the mountain. And I expressed how how beautiful that was. And then the one day he mentioned that back to me. Mm. in his own words and terms and he was like this this moment of connection he felt and i was like you got it cool you just got it and now yeah. you're screwed <laughs> now yeah, the it, hooks it, are set. it's set in yeah. and it's a good hook yeah but i realized at that moment i have changed his life by one degree mm-hmm. and i would that's just the use compass heading sure and now this one degree is going to get wider and wider as he journeys along, and right, mm-hmm. and so now I've had this effect on him, in the in the positive way, and it's going to steer him somehow. It's yeah. going to lead somewhere down the road for him, and yeah. I don't know where that may go, but just like Tommy, this this moment in time, this moment he spent with this dude, this man, it's going to change him. Mm-hmm. I don't know how where it's going to go, but hey, this is what we're looking for. Exactly, changing the world one person yeah. at a time through a different approach to the things we say. Yeah. Just not like everybody else. Dude. I know. I love that. Whether it's, you know, people that are getting their own fitness going, whether it's people like Tommy helping someone else, whether it's trainers who are developing their own business, which I love to hear from, you know, because I'm that's just fantastic. And and whether it's just regular people who aren't even participating in workouts yet. If you're not eating differently, if you're not doing anything yet, that's fine. I'm glad that you're here and I hope that you continue to stick around. Cool. That's it. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for being on here again with us for one more. Let's recap this real quickly and we'll be out of here. So episode 11. Yeah. 11. Working out for your entire life, working out for your, for life, your life, working out for your lifestyle. For your life. Yeah. yeah hit for it. others' lives. You're good at it. <laughs> this is the way you emphasize the yeah, words. Which word, right? right. We don't want to, we don't want to have you guys feeling too turned around, but remember this, right? It could be some big medical tough conversation that stimulates a change hopefully a wholesale life change. Hopefully that's sooner rather than later. If you're hearing this and you hear it from, from our voices rather than from the doctor. And then also there's that way of how you're going to live, the, the lifestyle that you're going to be able to lead and the moments you'll be able to participate in and the overall duration, the quality of that life that you're going to have and the number of years that you'll have when you're going through. So Hopefully you took away some good advice from today. And uh, if you have anything, questions, comments, concerns, ideas, suggestions, or if you just want to say hi, don't hesitate to reach out to us directly. And if you don't mind, take a moment, like, comment, share, subscribe, everything else you need to. I don't to. know. Yeah, all the buttons you're <laughs> supposed you can, to push. Uh, put notifications on the yeah. platform, do that as well. And make sure you're watching every episode from start to finish. So these social media platforms think we're important. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There you go, man. Thank you. Thank you. And goodbye.